The Three Most Crucial Goals for Leaders If you're going to be an effective leader, then it is crucial to know what it is you want to achieve. Ultimately, the job of a leader is to help a team to accomplish a specific task in the shortest time possible. And in order to do that, you need to decide what that task you're going to accomplish is. With that in mind, keep listening and we'll discuss how to find what the most crucial goals for any leader should be. 1. To reach set objectives. The first goal that you should have as a leader is to reach a set objective. In other words, you need to create a measurable target for yourself and for your team that you can work toward. And once you have done that, you'll be able to start plotting the most efficient course possible. This might be to increase your profits, it might be to grow your customer base, or it might be to turn over more stock. Whatever the case, you can then measure your effectiveness as a leader by how well you are moving toward those goals. 2. To keep your team happy and safe. Another crucial goal for any leader should be to look after their team. Whether you are a manager, a parent, a scouts leader, being in charge means taking responsibility. Not only are you taking responsibility for getting the tasks completed, though, you're also responsible for the well-being of those under you. Your job is to provide a safe and comfortable working environment where they can feel happy and therefore work their best. If something happens to them under your care, that's on you. 3. To grow and develop the team. A good leader is not someone who simply keeps the ship afloat, though. A good leader should also have their eye on the bigger picture and know how they want to grow and develop their team, both on an individual basis and on the basis of the team as a whole. This might mean investing a little time and money in R&D so that you can develop new ideas and take your organization to new heights. It might mean thinking as a parent about how you can take your family to the next rung on the property ladder. Or it might be providing staff with career progression opportunities so that they too can get that satisfactory feeling of moving forward. Four Powerful Ways to Motivate Your Team One of your jobs as a leader is to make sure that those under you stay motivated and on task. You need to help light the fire and the passion beneath them in order to get them to work harder and faster and to deliver their best. In this presentation, we'll discuss four powerful ways you can do that. 1. Give them autonomy and authorship. One of the very best ways to motivate any member of the staff is to give them some kind of ownership over their own project. This should be something that gives them creative license to complete the work as they see fit but it should also have their name attached to it so that they can proudly claim what they have done as their own. This makes an important cognitive shift and is very different from being a nameless cog in a machine. Help your team to feel proud of the work they're doing. 2. Show your passion. If you are someone who leads from above but is constantly complaining and undermining the work you have to do, then you're going to lose the enthusiasm of your team fast. Instead, you need to make sure that you are passionate about what you are doing and that you truly care, and you need to find ways to communicate that fact to your team. Passion and enthusiasm are highly contagious. Once you get the bug, it will spread. 3. Explain the why. Stop telling your team what to do and start telling them why. When you tell someone why they need to do something, it helps them to understand what the end result needs to be. Not only does this help them to work more flexibly to achieve the results that you're looking for, but it also gives them more motivation because they understand why what they're doing matters. 4. Help them develop. Finally, try to think about how the work you assign to different members of your team will help them to accomplish their goals and progress. Every project or task should be a learning opportunity, 
which can ultimately help with career progression. Try to demonstrate this, or find ways to make the work worthwhile for the individual completing it, and not just the broader organization. The key is not to motivate with outside promises of reward or punishment, then. Instead, use these four powerful methods to try to encourage intrinsic motivation in your team. How to be an influential thought leader in your industry. When you think of a leader, you might think of a manager or perhaps some kind of political leader. Maybe your mind goes to military generals or tyrants from history. The word leader can mean many things, though. And in fact, it doesn't even have to mean that you are giving orders to anyone. A leader is simply someone who is ahead of the pack and who guides the way for everyone else, just like you might have a leader pulling ahead in a race. You might not be a manager, a tyrant, or even a parent then, but you can still be a thought leader and help guide the way for others. If you are a blogger or an entrepreneur, then this is a powerful aim to have, as it will allow you to influence the hearts and minds of the general public, potentially selling more products and helping to create trends. It's also possible for an entire business to be a thought leader in this way. So how does one become a thought leader? How do you become the influencer that everyone is listening to? The answer lies in what we've already said. You need to lead the way. That means you need to either be the best or you need to be original. Let's imagine that you have a health blog, for instance. If you make a health blog that is just like every other health blog on the web and that has all the exact same articles and posts, then there's no way that you're going to be considered a thought leader. You're simply copying a tried and tested formula. In this case, you are a thought follower. But if you come up with your own ideas on fitness, if you find new ways to exercise or put a new spin on your blog to appeal to a different audience, then you will be novel enough to stand out. That's when people will start to follow. And that's when you become the thought leader. The other way to do this is simply to be the biggest and the best resource. But that requires a lot more manpower and investment to accomplish. Being unique is better. Before you can do any of this, though, you first need to find your passion. Unless you are passionate about the industry you are in, you will never be able to blaze that trail. How to lead by example. There are many important rules to keep in mind when you're trying to become an effective leader. One of the most important is that you should always lead by example. In other words, don't adopt the do as I say, not as I do mentality. You need to become a shining example of the kind of work that you want your team to accomplish and avoid coming across as a hypocrite at all costs. So how exactly do you accomplish this? Let's take a look. Stay calm and collected. One of the most important ways to lead by example is to stay calm and collected. Be passionate about what you're doing and make it clear that you care, but don't get into a panic when a deadline is approaching and you don't have the work done. Why is this so important? Because emotions are contagious, and especially when you're in charge. You will act as a barometer for your team, and their stress levels will almost always be heavily influenced by yours. If you want them to keep calm and carry on, you have to do that first. Never ask someone to do something you wouldn't do yourself. Leading by example is not just a matter of acting correctly. It's also a case of demonstrating that you are willing and able to do all the things that you are asking your team to do. The most obvious example of this would be working late in an office or avoiding taking a vacation on a certain day. If you have one rule for your team and another for yourself, then you won't look like a team player and it will come across that you're only out for yourself. Guess what? When you're out for yourself, your team will follow suit and act the exact same way. Don't blame a higher up. Sometimes, being a leader means passing the buck. 
you get told by the CEO that you need to meet a certain target, even if that means working late, and then it's your job to pass that charming news onto your team. What's tempting to do at this point is to complain and rebel. You want your team to like you, and so you want them to know that this order did not come from you. The obvious answer? Complain about a higher-up, and let the team know you're on their side. Except all you're doing here is setting a precedent for rebellion and putting everyone in a bad mood. Be professional and worry less about being liked. The Five Secrets of Successful Leaders There are countless different things that make a great leader. Not only that, but it's also true that every leader is different, and one person's leadership style might be very different from another person's. But while this is true, there are still some consistent features that you will find in any great leader. In this presentation, we'll be looking at five of the most important secrets that nearly all great leaders share. 1. They have control over their emotions. Being in control of your own emotions is absolutely critical to being a good leader. A leader cannot be seen to be panicking, and they mustn't yell or rant at their team when they're frustrated. You need to be as solid as a rock, and to forge ahead even when the going gets tough. This takes immense mental discipline, so better get working on it. 2. They care deeply about what they're doing. Can you be a leader even if you hate what you do? Probably. Can you be a great one? Probably not. Passion comes across when you speak to people, and being excited for your work will motivate the team more than anything else you can do or say. If you don't already love the work, try to find something you love about it, or do something else. 3. They see the big picture. Your job as a leader is to see the big picture so that you can delegate work and let your team take care of the details. You might have started out in IT and risen to management, but now you can no longer be an IT guy. Your job is to know a little bit about every aspect of your work so that you can guide the entire project smoothly. 4. They take responsibility. As a leader, you are in charge. That means you're responsible when things go well and when they go badly. Don't blame your team. They need you to be a protective buffer so that they can have the confidence to work their best without dealing with the consequences. 5. They care about their team. If you look after your team, then they will look after you. Your team is your most important asset, and your job is to nurture them so that you can get the best out of them. See them only as a resource, though, and they'll quickly lash out and push back. Great leaders look out for those underneath them, and that earns them incredible loyalty. How to encourage productivity without hurting creativity. If you are in charge, then part of your job is to motivate your team to get their work done on time. In a management setting, for instance, you will likely have targets that you need to meet, and deadlines that you need to work to. And that means you need to encourage your team to work fast and not spend their time chatting around the water fountain. So what do you do? One popular option is to incentivize the work and to offer some kind of reward for those who complete their projects on time. The only problem is that according to psychologists, this can actually hamper creativity. Why? Because when we are working toward something, we put pressure on ourselves. When you put pressure on yourself, this essentially means that you enter the fight-or-flight response. You become stressed. Yes, even if you are working toward a reward, rather than working to avoid a punishment, you still trigger a stress response. In order to think creatively, we need to relax. When you relax and give yourself space to think, this causes more neurons throughout the brain to fire. In short, when you're panicking, you become very focused on a single type of thinking. 
whereas relaxation allows the mind to wander, which is where imagination and inventiveness comes from. So, what is the solution? One option is to think about the different kinds of work that need to be done, and to treat them differently. Data entry, for example, does not need creative thinking to be finished. In this case, providing rewards or bonuses can be a great way to get your team to work faster. But for inventive problem solving, R&D, or even something like coding, time and space are necessary. Your job as a leader is to segregate these kinds of tasks. This could mean putting one team on the grunt work and another on the creative work, and then getting them to switch. Alternatively, it could mean creating windows for working on each kind of project. Perhaps let your team work creatively until lunch, and then switch gears afterward. Although actually, eating triggers the release of relaxation neurochemicals, such as serotonin and melatonin. So you might be better to swap those two around. As a leader, your job is to assign the right person to the right job and motivate them in the right way. As it turns out, knowing a little neuroscience can come in handy. How to turn your biggest critics into your greatest supporters. History is filled with great leaders and influential characters. Some of these figures might have been quite controversial in terms of what they actually believed or accomplished, but that doesn't mean that we can't take some lessons from the way they motivated their followers or dealt with dissidents. In this case, we're going to be looking at the case of Mussolini, the Italian dictator who can teach modern leaders a few things about how to deal with rebels and naysayers in their ranks. Listen and learn. Transformismo Mussolini was a political theorist and had predefined methods for dealing with a range of different situations that would arise as he led. One such strategy was called transformismo. Here, he would take the loudest critics in his party and then get them on his side by giving them jobs of great importance. This goes against our natural instincts, but it is a much more effective way of neutralizing a threat than the alternative. Often, when someone is vocally critical of our leadership style, our initial impulse might be to cut them off and isolate them, remove them from others whose opinion they might sway, punish them, make an example of them. But all this does is to make them more bitter, more angry, and more motivated. Worse, it can make a martyr out of them and turn you into the bad guy. It's only a matter of time before they gather their resources and try to stage a coup. On the other hand, promoting your critics and giving them an important role within your organization will flatter them and demonstrate to them that you value their opinion. And you should. Opinions that disagree with your own are far more valuable than having more yes-men. What's more is that this person will often quickly learn the burden of leadership and realize why things aren't quite so easy. They will probably soften to your position and at least better understand your motivations. More than anything else, they will simply be too busy at this point to become dangerous. That and you'll be able to keep a close eye on them. As they say, keep your friends close and enemies closer. Next time someone in your ranks starts to kick up a stink, consider offering them a raise instead of trying to shut them down as quickly as you can. You may just create a powerful ally. Three ways to have a more commanding presence. A leader does not need to be a mountain of a person with a large chest and broad shoulders. He does not need to be able to command armies with a booming voice and tons of charisma. But you know what? It sure helps. In this presentation, we'll discuss how to give yourself a more commanding presence, and that way, make sure that people will sit up and take notice. 1. Dress for the occasion. As a leader, you need to set an example, and you need to make people take you seriously. While it might sound shallow, one important way to do that is to dress the part and take care in your appearance. Maybe you think that what you wear shouldn't matter, 
But actually, what you're doing here is demonstrating that you care about what you do, and that you have the ability to present yourself well. Those are rather comforting things to see in a leader. Another trick is to try to add a dash of red into the mix, perhaps a tie or lipstick for women. The color red is one we unconsciously associate with leadership, and it's also a color that draws attention to itself. 2. Learn to enunciate. If you're going to be a powerful leader, then you will want to avoid mumbling into your chest or speaking with all the volume of a dormouse. Again, you do get quiet leaders, but they are less common. Learn to project by speaking from your diaphragm, and be careful to pronounce your words carefully. A quick and easy tip is to slow down the pace of your talking. This makes you come across as more intelligent, and it gives you more time to consider how you're going to phrase the next sentence. If you're struggling, then consider getting lessons on how to speak properly and present yourself. Even consider studying opera. 3. Develop your charisma. Everyone wishes they were a little more charismatic. And of course, it's not as easy as simply becoming charismatic. If it were, we all would be magnetic. But there are things you can do to develop this trait. One is to try gesticulating more and using more space by moving around as you speak. These are things that have been shown to make others judge us as more charismatic. More important, though, is simply to find the passion in what you're saying. This will naturally lead you to speaking up and gesticulating more, as you'll really believe in what you're doing, and that will come across with your entire body. Five Mistakes of Bad Leaders We all wish that we could be great leaders, and with time and practice, most of us will get there eventually. Leaders are made, not born. And there are definitely some strategies and techniques you can use to improve your skills in that regard. But before you get carried away with being a great leader, perhaps it's best to start off by not being a bad leader. Here are five mistakes that bad leaders make and which you should try to avoid. 1. Blaming others. Whether it is blaming management or blaming your staff, Blaming others should be off the cards for a leader. In fact, your job is to take responsibility even when it wasn't your fault. Passing the buck just makes you appear weak and keen for approval, and it will damage the trust that others have in you. 2. Getting stressed. When a deadline is looming and the chips are down, you need to stay calm and collected so that you can provide a healthy barometer for your team. They will follow your lead in this regard, so put on a brave face, even if you're panicking deep down. 3. Getting angry. The same goes for getting angry. If you rant and rave at your staff, then you will quickly lose their respect, and they might even start trying to goad you on purpose. If you do need to reprimand a member of staff, do so in a calm and fair manner. And remember, you are their boss, not their mom or dad. 4. Micromanaging Micromanaging is bad news no matter what kind of leader you are. You need to have the faith in your team to let them work largely independently, as this will be more intrinsically rewarding and motivating for them, and it will mean you're able to concentrate on the bigger picture. Be willing to hand out tasks to different members of the team, and then let them complete them in their own way. 5. Being scruffy. Presentation really does matter as a leader. If you look scruffy, then it sends the signal that you don't care about what you're doing, or that you're too disorganized to present yourself properly. It can hurt your reputation, and as a result, it will hurt your ability to lead. If you're going to be taking care of your team, then you need to show that you can take care of yourself first and foremost. Top Influential Leaders to Model From Everyone has their own unique leadership style, 
And in order to be the best leader that you can be, you need to find your own rather than trying to force yourself into a particular mold. But although this is true, it's also true that you can stand to learn an awful lot by paying close attention to other successful leaders from different industries, from history, even from fiction. In this presentation, we'll take a look at some great leaders to learn from. Adapt these lessons into your own leadership style. Steve Jobs Steve Jobs was not a perfect leader by any stretch. He reportedly got angry and would alienate those he worked with, eventually leading to a coup. You can learn a lot of what not to do from Jobs, but there's no denying that he was also a visionary who had a clear idea of what he wanted to achieve and who wouldn't accept anything less than perfection. He had novel ideas, and he got the best from those who worked with him. That's what you can learn from Jobs, the importance of having a vision that you really care about deeply and not compromising on your ideals. Just recognize that people have families, too, and they might care about those more. Nelson Mandela Certainly one of history's greatest leaders and a man who managed to change the course of history. You can learn a lot from Mandela, from his near-poetic speeches to the way he was constantly improving and developing himself. Mandela believed strongly in education and actually attended six higher education institutes himself. Stop learning and you stop growing. Stop growing and you become stale. John F. Kennedy Kennedy was a great leader, but also a controversial one. This is a common trend. He demonstrated the importance of presentation and image, but also the strength of keeping focused on the big picture. Kennedy had an unprecedented ability to think big and was the man who gave the incredible We Choose to Go to the Moon speech. Don't be afraid to aim for the stars. Winston Churchill Perhaps a big part of Churchill's appeal was his character and his charisma. His image as the British bulldog made him familiar and likable to the British people when they needed him most, and this demonstrates how embracing your own quirks and personality can be a positive thing as a leader. Of course, his rousing speeches did a lot of good, as did his willingness to get his own hands dirty. He even spent some time on rooftops fire-spotting. <laughs>